experience in this attempt of bringing automatic testing closing to to QAs that are not used to developing, you know, the, the people that make sure that we are doing the right things, but they are not very aware of how we're doing it or not very interesting in getting their hands steady in, in doing it themselves. Um, so to go through this presentation, I'm going to present you the context. What, uh, like, what's the environment of the project I work on? Uh, why it is a problem, this that I'm bringing up? What was my proposal? And my first design and implementation of this POC that uh, I like, produced and brought, brought to a team. I'm going to share the results that we've had so far and my expectation for the future step, like where, where we can go from here. Um, so very briefly, uh, the context is that our project is built under a distributed architecture. Uh, we used uh, Azure Functions and we have multiple Azure Functions and they built a scenario. So and in this example that I have here, um, I have a three-step scenario where our first step would be to load information. You know, we grab information usually from uh, Azure Blob Storage in our case. Uh, so we load some blobs, we do some small processing there, then we store it back and in a different um, storage account, which would represent this one. And when th that's done, we send out a service bus message to the next Azure function, which would then load up this the information that we just saved. Uh, maybe load a different uh, blob, maybe load something from tables, then send out the, the, the uh, service message to this next function so it can do its thing, which in this case is it would be validate. So load up the results and then just uh, save the files and leave it there for the next uh, process, um, which could be a customer or a client or some, something else. Uh, this, this is, I feel like this is the, the smallest or the shortest process that we have. This, there could be many steps in between, and this could be triggered by different uh, ways. So this could start by being a service bus triggered function. Uh, it could be triggered by a change in a blob storage, or it could be a webhook that we are exposing uh, through an, uh, an endpoint. Uh, but this is how it works. And the problem that we have with this is that our QA team I feel like they're the people that know the most about about the full context of the thing, you know, because we we work when we work, we grab our user story, we have an idea or how this is going to communicate with all the the rest of the pieces, but they are the ones that actually deal with it, you know, and test things and throw use cases, and they many times even help um, diagnose uh, errors that happen in production, so they know what the clients are doing with these things. So they are the people that know the most about, about the end-to-end -end thing, and they should know. Um, they are very thorough with their testing, which it's very consuming, time-consuming for the team, but it also pays up by catching like almost everything that they could pop up uh, at early stages, which is good for us because nothing, uh, we avoid fires this way in production. I mean, it's... Uh, Everyone would prefer to fix this before this reaches a production, even if we have to push a release a bit more. Um, they often perform uh, full regression tests. So they, if you touch a functionality in a particular point of the, uh, the platform, they not only test that, that flow that, uh, that, that changed or, or that step that changed, which is what we as dev usually do. You know, we, we just uh, tweak the unit test here and there to uh, generate the happy path and the, I feel like the most obvious uh, errors that we could get there, but they test a bunch of things and they have a battery of, of tests that they run, uh, which again, uh, adds up to the time that this takes. Um, but the weakness is that they are not very familiar with automatic testing and sadly they are usually at full capacity. So even if they have the interests in knowing about automatic testing, about mocks and or, or expanding, you know, a unit test framework and applying it in a way that allows them to generate scenario testing or full flow testing. Uh, it's it's not a, 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 a an option for, for them at the time. So with this in mind, I came up with this idea, you know, I had time, I have a bit of time uh, in between releases. So I I came up to our product and I said, I, would, I want to implement something. I don't know what yet, but I want to implement something that would allow them 
to be a bit closer. If they want to, if they had, I don't know, half a day that they want to invest in implementing something, I want that full, to, that half day to be used in in a way that can produce something valuable right away. They don't have to learn how to set up certain calls. They don't have to learn. Um, I don't want them to, to have to learn how to use all the different service that we used and call in between the different steps. Uh, I don't want to know about the, I don't want them to, to have to know the, the parameters and everything. I want them to be able to do whatever they do on their day to day, but put it in a, in, in a text, uh, in, in code form, you know, but it, I want it to be easy to read, easy to understand, and hopefully we can get something valuable uh, out of this in a short amount of time that it, it's easy for them to test. And on top of that, that they can trust because we can build these things ourselves, but if they don't trust this uh, proposal, this this thing that I'm proposing we do, uh, they are going to probably end up doing these tests that are being executed automatically. They're going to end up running it manually anyway. So that's why I included also this last step. I want them to be involved in the process because I want them to know that it's not like magic. Uh, it's just a way for them to, to be closer to this. So with this, objectives in mind, I moved on on building something. So the first thing that I wanted to get out of the way is uh, remove as much as possible of all the boilerplate code that we have to include when we're using uh, automatic testing. So creator, creation and configuration of mocks, I want this, that to be as simple of, as possible. Uh, instantiation and configuration of services also uh, in a like in the perfect world, they would they don't even know what services each um, each part of the code uses. Uh, that should be could be completely trans transparent to them. Uh, they also shouldn't or they don't need to know the business calls that go through the flow, you know, and that goes in between. Um, and the asserting also, I think it could be a bit more explicit than what what we as devs are used to uh, with with uh, the, all the common uh, unit testing or uh, scenario testing frameworks. Um, and all of this while providing a way to manipulate the inputs and outputs in a similar fashion to what they currently do. And what they currently do is they go to a data source, uh, in this case would be a storage account, they know the path to a certain file, they access the file, they manipulate the file, let's say it's a JSON file, they change properties in that JSON file, they save it, then they manually send the service host message or they manually call the webhook, they wait for the process to go through, they go to application insights, they read the uh, log messages, seeing for certain ones that they know that they're going to be there if this was successful or failed, depending on what they're testing, and then go to the last uh, container in the process uh, which would contain the um, the result of this whole operation, right? So I want them to have the option to open a file just like they would do, tweak, tweak it and or duplicate it or do whatever they want with it, save it, trigger this thing and have an option to validate the actual output and have a way to uh, validate log messages because that's what's really important for them in this case. That's what we use in production. We only have access to logs. So it's important that the logging uh, is there in the way that we expect it to do. This is completely opposed to what we as devs would do, right? Because we would instantiate a certain class. We would populate the minimum set of properties needed to generate the case. You know, if we are testing that the uh, name property uh, is properly validated or catched. If it's null, we just leave that empty and that's it. And we ignore all the other properties. They would use actual files with everything populated and that's uh, the way they trigger. And that's why it's important that they have a way to build this. Uh, so starting with my implementation, this is the simpler one. So I created a, a stub for our log manager, uh, which has a list of log entries. And these are the functions that we use in our code. So if you want to track an event, uh, like this is this could be a debug message. You just have to pass a message and a severity level. 
and by default it's information. And this is the exact same implementation that we have for the uh, component that throws these messages to uh, application insights, but instead of sending it there, we are just adding it to the list. Fairly straightforward. Same thing for exception, but this one also gets an exception uh, and a track trace, which is a bit different, but yeah, not too bad. That way, after the whole process has gone through, I have a place to go and take a look and see if there are message is the uh, the uh, first step completed successfully message is there I, I can come here and check that or if there's an exception or if i want the process to uh, validate the process the process executed without exceptions or without warnings i can do that using this part of the application the next step is setting up a way to return the these source files right so uh, here I'm, I'm presenting a way to mock the base file. This is a file that's really long, I don't know, a couple thousand lines, a JSON file that has every everything. So this is the way to do it. It's not nothing too special here, just that I'm masking it. Instead of having, uh, having them to do all this for five lines, they just call set up full base file and that's it. I call this setups, by the way. Um, but what if instead of returning, uh, and, and these are files that actually live in the solution, and they can open and manipulate and, and, and uh, tinker with and all of that. But what if instead of returning this file, I wanted to have another one, because I want to have multiple cases. I want to have this base case, but I also want to have another one where I have a property missing, or I have uh, duplicate entries or whatever. So in that case, I create this one. So I have an over right now. It's fairly similar function. So what I'm saying here is whenever the full base file that JSON gets requested, instead return this one. And I'm passing the file name over here as parameter. So I can have my full base file, but I can also have full base file uh, test scenario one uh, missing properties or something like that. And that would be only for a particular scenario. Uh, then I feel like this is one of the more interesting parts because we have in between storage, like between functions, we have a, a storage, which in this case is a storage account. So I want to execute the full thing, but instead of going to Azure storage, uh, this is a unit test. This or, or a scenario test. I don't. I don't need this permanent search. I volatile search is good enough for me, and that's what we should use. So, here I'm saying that whenever I want to save something to a blob container, um, I'm going to return the name because that's the behavior that we currently have. We pass the first parameter would be the file name. The second parameter would be the contents of that file. Um, so uh, with this setup, what I'm doing is I'm returning the name of whatever you ask me to save, but I'm also uh, saving it in these dictionaries that I have up here. So. I'm saving it in a dictionary that's a string string where the key is the file name and the value is the content. Uh, and this is the default behavior. So whenever this gets uh, requested, like when when you when we go through these uh, tests and you ask Azure Azure storage to save something, instead of going to actual Azure, uh, it would come to this dictionary and stay there, and we can then validate uh, against this thing. Uh, and similar to that, this is the default read implementation. So we have a way to, instead of sending it to Azure, uh, put it in a dictionary, in a local dictionary, volatile dictionary. Now this is the uh, setup that um, allows you to read from it. Whenever the, uh, where is it? Download blocks with names function gets called instead of going to Azure, we're going to go to our, dic to our dictionary that we populated before, which is this one. And we would deserialize, which is what our component do does and return it. But on top of that, we might also want to tweak 
what's was saved or let's say uh okay i'm asking you to save it but when you return it return something different to generate a particular case to generate an exception or to generate an error or to force uh, a special case uh in an easier manner so that's what this does this is the override so we're saying whenever this file gets requested uh, let's return this one instead so this is a way to mock the files that we're going to return for the in-between uh, like data sources. Um, oh, and by the way, one of my main focuses here was, um, I'm going to go back a couple slides. I wanted to be clear for them, right? Because I mean, they are not familiar with dev and, and stuff. So I put a special emphasis here in the uh, documentation part. And I use the, for example, set up the, instead of using the word mock, that's very common for us, I used set up the fake partially customized files. And that's the actual name of the blob container that they would go in and tinker with. So to make it familiar to them, to make it, to help them make the connection between what I'm doing here against what I used to do or, or what I do uh, like manually. Um, and this is the name of the uh, blob container, uh, the storage account, sorry. And yeah, so you'll see here how the documentation looks like for these uh, functions. So I'm saying here that this is the name of the uh, container. I'm explaining, describe, describing as much as possible, thinking in my target audience, you know, like I'm thinking in they and them, I'm thinking in the QA team. Uh, so they understand it. I don't need to understand it. I know how it works. Uh, but this would be a first for them. So you'll see this uh, comments here to show you as an example of what I did. And this is the, this even includes the, the path to this on the, um, on the search account and it includes the path on the solution. So, yeah. Then I wanted to find a way to make uh, asserts easier to understand. And that's when I came up with the idea of expectations. Like you, when you execute something, you expect something out of it. You expect to see a log entry. You expect to see no exceptions. You accept, expect to see no warnings. And these are the ones that I, I have here. These are the ones that I implemented. And they are just simple classes that extend from a base expectation class, but they each one of them contain the uh, properties that they need to validate, that we need to, to validate whatever they want to do. For example, log enter expectation has a message and a severity level. And we are going to check that it's, it is there. And this is the documentation, by the way. Um, so, so far, the ones that I have is a way to check uh, that the log entry is there, that there were no ex exceptions with the execution, that there was no warnings with the execution, that a file is there and just there, and the file and that a file con uh, contains something like I have I have I expect this file to come out of or, or these contents to come out of uh, a flow a flow execution. Uh, so you execute the whole thing and you can compare one against the other. Um, we use a lot of JSON files, so I have JSON property in case they want to validate just one property instead of the full uh, thing. Or if we are removing something, which uh, was the case at some point, I also include a way to check that a file no longer contains a property, a, a JSON property. Uh, yeah, so, and the way you, to add expectations is just called add expectation and you instantiate your, your expectation, that's it. And here's the documentation for that method. So I'm making explicit what the options are for you to to include what you're expecting of this. Then to assert these expectations, I have a run asserts function and I run through the list and using a switch statement, I'm casting these things and doing whatever uh, corresponds to their, uh, like to their type. If there's no exception, I'm executing and no exception expectations, I'm going to the telemetry helper, I'm going to the log entries, and I'm saying I'm expecting it to not be any uh, message with the uh, error severity level. And if there is, uh, I'm sending this error 
So uh, I'm actually asserting it here, but I'm masking it from them to make it a bit easier to understand uh, from, from the outside, outside this wrapper. Um, log entry expectations, another example where I'm doing something very similar, but I'm looking for it to have the message that I was passed and the severity level that I was passed. Something that we can improve here, uh, by the way, that, that because this started very small, this started with just a few expectations and has been growing. So my intention here is to now move this logic to the, expect, to the actual expectation, uh, because this otherwise this switch is going to grow like infinitely. Um, yep. And then to put it all together, I have a runful flow function and the, the uh, the snippet comes in the next slide. It, it didn't fit here. <laughs> but what it does, it creates a trigger, a payload for a function. Uh, it triggers the, bus, the business function. We don't have a way to trigger the actual Azure function uh, when running these tests, but uh, we have it separated, the, the infrastructure logic from the business logic. So we are skipping the infrastructure. We are going straight to the business logic. We're triggering that out. This is going to do its thing. It's going to uh, put some files in these dictionaries that I set up and then uh, and return something. Then we're going to grab all of that. We're going to build the next input to the second function and repeat the process until this, this whole thing is completed. I enclosed all of this into a try catch finally function. So I'm not, I, it shouldn't fail, right? If everything goes right, uh, the try should go smoothly in the finally um, section, I call the run asserts function to include to, to uh, apply the expectations or, or to review the expectations that the user set up. Uh, and in the catch, I'm catching it and I'm leaving a message to make the unit test fail uh, if something unexpected happened. And this is kind of how it looked like. So I'm uh, configuring my app settings that these functions could have, you know, it could be a connection string, it could be an ID or something, I'm building, uh, I'm creating the first business function, I'm running it with the, I'm executing it. In this case, let's say it, it receives a store ID and this is the result. I'm checking that it was successful. If it was successful, I'm creating the payload for the second function using the result of the first function and then repeating the process. Um, and this could extend however many steps uh, your scenario has. Um, I have an exception, a catch where I'm catching an exception and just throwing it, you know, to make it fail if it if it uh, get to this case. And then in the final year, I run a search where we go through this list that I just showed you. Um, and this is how one test actually would look like. So you create a new test configurator, a test configurator. I and closed all of the defaults, you know, the, the default dictionaries, the default uh, base files, the, all the defaults into a single function to make it even easier for them. So when you have a test configurator that set up defaults, you are already good to go to run a base scenario. Uh, but you can tweak it to do whatever you want. So um, in this case, I'm saying that uh, to instead of using the base store file, Let's use one called store one. Uh, and if you are going to go and pick up the detailed file, uh, it's going to return an empty one because that's what I have set up here. And the store config, let's also return the one that's called store one. Then I move to expectations. Uh, in this particular case, I'm expecting no exceptions. I'm expecting no warnings. I'm expecting a log entry that's, uh, that contains the message first function completed with the severity level information. I'm expecting uh, that after this goes through, I have this file existing in the customized files container uh, and this other file to include in the customized files container. Then I can run the full flow. In this case, the run full flow has a, an additional parameter that uh, because this particular function has a, a special behavior when you call it twice. So that's why I'm, I'm triggering that there. But that's it. We we don't have to take care of um, all the 
mocks and services. I don't even need to know what services get called here. I don't need to know that I'm loading something from Azure. I don't need to know that I'm querying an external API to get something. I'm, I, all of that is masked by this. So if one of the QAs uh, creates a bug for me that, ha that says, I was trying to do this with this file, and uh, this happened, and I was expecting this other thing to happen. I can reach out to them and say, "Hey, let's let's uh, automate automate this this case that you found. I mean, I'm going to fix it, but let's automate it uh, so the next time you don't have to go through this. You don't have to do this thing manually, and show them this is and it's not as uh, intimidating, you know, as it would be to show it the full thing that we uh, must." Uh, and here's another example, but it's it's very. Uh, uh, oh, and by the way, you can see the uh, um, like arrange, act, and assert steps here. They are kind of masked. They are they are uh, hidden kind of, uh, but you can see them here. So this is. I don't. I don't think this is like the definitive solution. For me, the definitive solution would be for them to get interested, and to uh, be curious and want to do it the way we do because we have access to do whatever. You know, we. It's extremely flexible. You can. This is limited by what I implemented in this wrapper, and I'm open to extend it. But I don't think you can get the full functionality as you would if you were working with the. Uh, testing frameworks directly. But I feel like this is a good enough uh, first step uh, for them or, or, or something for, for them to get their, their toes uh, in the water, you know, and, and, and get into this, like cross that barrier that separates um, their manual work from, for, from this automated work and to help them get time <laughs> to, to do these things because they don't have the time. That's the, that's the main issue here. Um, and to like what, what we've seen so far as results, I I think I I achieved my first objective of making tests that are short and easy to read and understand because this thing is it is short. I mean, I'm able to show you this unit test in one screen, and that's good. <laughs> Otherwise, if it if this wasn't in place, I wouldn't be able to show you this scenario test in one screen, and you can see what's going on. You can see that uh, for the uh, full base file, I'm returning a full base file with an extra category, and that's it. And for the store config, I'm going to return the store one combined scenario file, and that's it. And I'm expecting it to don't don't have exceptions, to don't have uh, warnings, uh, to have this entry. Um, and I'm expecting uh, here I'm I'm in even comparing a file, so I'm expecting the customized file containers to have this file and the contents to, to this file to, to be the same as here. And I also am going to uh, ignore the created date, which is something that I did there because the file had like a timestamp that it was messing up when you were comparing. So uh, yeah, so you can do that. And so far, what we've done in our team, uh, with what I've done in our team, we have partial involve, uh, involvement for, from QA. I was asking them and showing them and sharing uh, regularly, you know, being a bug in the rear, reaching out, say, hey, look, this is what I have. What do, what do you think? What, how we can do it better? Uh, how do you test this? Or when they create bugs, reaching out to them, how did you find this? What was what you did? Uh, so I feel like that created a connection between, like, it, it is our team. It is one team, but it, there are two different, very different uh, parts of it, like different roles. Uh, but with these conversations, uh, even with the conversations, even before getting to the actual result of having this in place, uh, we found, created a connection, uh, and there are some people that are obviously more naturally interested or uh, want to know more about this. So that is good. We, we, I feel like we, we've, we've achieved that. We have people interested. We have want, we have people that want to use this. Uh, and for future steps, first thing for me would be because I, it all started as a POC. So a ton of things are hard coded and are it's custom. It's it's custom to the scenario that you're using. In this case, we're we're targeting one of our channels, uh, but if we want to if we want to bring this over to a different channel with a different set of flows, uh, 
there's not many things that we can reuse. I would say you can reuse the, the expectations and that's it. So set up a framework in place uh, with, comp uh, with defined components and uh, you know, uh, interfaces and stuff to make it easier to carry to other flows. Uh, continue to invite people uh, to uh, make them aware of that this is an option for them uh, and make them interested to, that this is actually to help them uh, get their time back uh, and expand our scenario pool because yeah we, we have a bunch of them and I since I build this and I know how this works I use it for instead of you using a unit tests I feel like using this is so much easier because you just add a new file and that's it but yeah, this still needs to still needs to grow uh, into what they do. Like that's the intention. This is not the intention for this is not to um, take the, like take the place of unit tests, but to cover a different uh, set of things, uh, which is more end-to-end uh, -end focus. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's that has been my presentation. That's my experience with this thing. Thank you so much for joining. For your interest in your time and your